We have Wikibon, and we're here with Laz Vecuritas at, uh, from, from Dell and, and Equalogic, and, and Rich, Rich Rather, who is um, with a law firm, uh, Quarles and Brady, and is a Dell customer, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, virtualization, how you guys are deploying uh, your iSCSI arrays, you know, what you're doing with VMware. So welcome, gentlemen. Laz, uh, uh, welcome back. <laughs> Cube you know, saw you at, uh, in June, a, a Cube yes. alum. That's right. Rich, first time on, so welcome. Thank you. So how's the show going for you guys? So it's really been exciting for us uh, at, uh, at Dell. Uh, we have uh, a whole bunch of really interesting things going on. So first of all, uh, the relaunch of the Equalogic Arrays. We have a brand new platform uh, that's uh, showcased in our booth. Lots of big improvements on the uh, hardware side there. So we've basically gone to the next gen. Uh, really good stuff. And I, it seems to be generating a lot of excitement. Uh, so we Mike, are. Mike. Yeah, we are also um, you know, rolling out the, uh, the first show with Compellent integrated in, so uh, the booth has been supersized. <laughs> and, and, uh, it, it, it so tell the folks wanted... out there, what's going on? Because we were at the Dell Storage Forum, Silicon Angle and theCUBE, Dave was there, I, had, I couldn't make it, I was at the, stuck out in Vegas. Um, but with Dell, always had a presence in, in hardware and software, had the acquisition of Equal Logic, Compellent comes in, what, is the current situation? Just really summarize quickly. Where's Dell? At? You guys have got a lot going on. A lot of cool products. Good, good technology. Just, just quickly give us an overview of where you guys are at. Well, so uh, we're in the process of uh, really integrating the compelling technology into the overall pro product portfolio. One, one of the um, uh, things that everyone should remember that it's only been about six months since we closed that deal. Uh, I know everyone is really impatient, uh, but we've made yeah, a lot of progress. We don't want to hear any complaining from you guys. Uh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, scar tissue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we are uh, we, we are basically uh, aligning Compellent uh, for uh, the fiber channel market and for more of the the super high end storage capabilities uh, that that they can provide. And uh, you know, the mid market and low end uh, continues to be the Ecologic. Uh, and uh, we are rolling out a number of other complementary technologies which are more horizontal. Things like file services, things like uh, deduplication, that are going to basically uh, cover the entire uh, base storage platform, uh, whether it's Equalogic or Compellent. The common services across yeah, that platform. Yeah, exactly. Great. Um, now Rich, uh, you're, a, you're a VMware practitioner, an IT Correct. practitioner. Um, why don't we start with the VMware piece, we're at VMworld. Um, First of all, where are you at uh, with with VMware? Uh, tie it into what you're seeing at the show. Give us an update and you know paint a picture for us of you know sort of what what you guys are doing with VMware. Sure, sure. From a customer perspective, uh, you know the show has been amazing so far. The the topic, the content, new vSphere five features coming out. Really looking forward to all that. Um, we've been a VMware customer for about seven years. Uh, we started with GSX, so we've been in the the. Uh, family a long time, yeah. and uh, currently today we're almost 80% virtualized, uh, so we have a large uh, virtual deployment. Uh, we've got about 350 servers, about 280 of those are virtual, and uh, we run everything on VMware, all of our core business applications, Exchange, SQL, our document management system, which in a law firm is our lifeblood, and uh, we also have a, a VDI deployment as well, about 450 desktops. How about your applications? Uh, what percent of your apps are, are virtualized? Uh, we have over 500 apps in a law firm. Law firms are generally application heavy, and, and uh, almost all of those, with the exception of the core office suite, all of them are virtualized. It's exchanged as well? Correct. Yeah, so um, a pretty sizable shop um, for a small we, company. Yeah, we are. We're a, we're a AMLAW 200 law firm, which uh, in the legal vertical is kind of like our Fortune 500. So uh, we have 1,000 employees. We've got seven offices. We are international. So um, pretty good footprint. And from an IT perspective, it's it's a decent size shop. You mentioned uh, vSphere 5. Are you going to be moving to vSphere 5? Uh, pardon me? You mentioned vSphere 5. Are you going to be Correct. moving? In, in Absolutely. Vision? Yeah. I'm really looking forward to some of the features, especially some of the storage features. Uh, really looking forward to storage DRS and some of the impact it's going to have in our environment. Can you talk a little bit more about um, you know, what's exciting in the storage area to you about the recent announcements? Wow. Uh, you know, storage, it, it's really interesting how virtualization across the board has changed technology. And storage is, is no different. The impact that virtualization has had in the storage market, and from a customer perspective, all of the features that are out there today allow us to take storage and look at it in the view of being modular. Um, you know, it gives us the ability to grow our storage infrastructure just like our switching infrastructure and our server infrastructure and build it the way that our business needs it. And so it, it's really been a, a, a cool place, you know, 
just interesting to work with over the course of the last couple of years. And I'm really looking forward to the next year with some of the announcements coming out, especially from Dell with uh, some of the recent acquisitions with Oak Arena. Are you 100% ice gussy shop? We are. Yeah, so I, mean, I don't want to get into a big religious debate, but uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I can't really take it too far. What's your experience been with, with that whole platform, the Ecologic platform, iSCSI? It, it's really been fantastic, and we were a fiber channel shop, so we had oh, fiber. Oh, really? you went from fiber? We, we had fiber channel in place. Is that a legacy so. infrastructure? Correct, yep. And okay. rather than investing more into fiber channel, which is expensive, we started uh, basically playing with the iSCSI platforms. And you know, we were skeptics like everybody else. We had our doubts on whether or not it would work. And performance has actually been fantastic in our environment. And moving now to 10 gig over iSCSI, you know, the, the playing field is level now. Uh, and with 40 gig on the horizon, in my opinion, it's going to surpass fiber channel. So you've got you're pretty much 10 gig E? You've, you've, Correct. You're in the process of migrating? Or? Correct. Yeah. Actually, our, our VDI deployments today and uh, portions of our SQL environments are 10 gig today. How are you using VDI? Uh, we use VDI. We originally implemented VDI as a replacement solution for remote access. And over the course of the last, you know, 18 months ago, I would have said, or six months ago, I would have said, we're probably 18 months from really deploying VDI mainstream. We're actually here today. And we have about 50 users in our environment that use VDI on a day-to-day -day basis. And these are power users. You know, these aren't help desks. This isn't a call center. These are secretaries and attorneys that, you know, we have secretaries that type 130 words a minute. And so with a VDI deployment and, and thin clients, they would always out-type the interface. Um, with the recent technologies and advancements in, in VMware, you know, it has it has come full circle and we're here. We're deploying it mainstream. Was it a real pain going to VDI? Was storage a big issue uh, initially? Boot storms, you always hear these nightmares, sizing, we, you we know, did. IO activity. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and one of the things that we dealt with was a boot storm. You know, we had that issue where a lot of our users come in between eight and nine in the morning and we, we uh, experience boot storms. Um, one of the things that helped us combat that was uh, one of the uh, offerings from Ecologic, which was a 6000 XVS, it's a hybrid array, with solid state and SAS drives within the same box. And uh, that really alleviated our boot storms. Not only that, but really improved our performance as well, so. Excellent. Um, Lass, we talk about, a lot about this week about integration. Sure. Um, and we talked at the Dell Storage Forum about integration as well. Um, now, we've done some work as you know, uh, at Wikibon, and, and Equalogic actually scored very, very high. Um, and I suspect, like a lot of the other companies that had highly virtualized, virtualized systems, the 3PAR would be an example, sure. the, your ability to integrate with VMware APIs was accelerated. Um, and uh, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, because Compellent, on the other hand, smaller company, you guys were part of Dell, so you had that advantage. Compellent wasn't, so they got sort of pushed to the back of the line. So you can see Equalogic is, substantially ahead of Compellent in terms of that integration. Um, will that change now? As it was, first of all, talk about that integration and why your platform, you know, why you're able to accelerate that and will the Compellent side be able to catch up? Okay, so uh, let's start with the, the first question. Um, you know, a little bit about the integration. So, so as you know, virtualization in general is, is sort of the fine art of lying. <laughs> to, uh, to from from one perspective or another. So so you know vSphere is lying to us uh, and telling us as an array that there's only one host there. Right. When in fact there's a number of virtual hosts. And uh, you know on the other side we're sitting there lying to them and telling them that we look like one disk. Uh, when in fact that's just <laughs> great, great not line. the case. And so we we uh, you know spend a, 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 a lot of time you know trying to make sure that we're not caught in the lie so to speak. And so, you know, you, you basically have these two curtains, veils of virtualization, and, you know, it, sometimes it helps to know what's going on on the other side of the curtain. That's really the, the mandate for, for uh, integration, right? Uh, for example, uh, it would be really nice to know which virtual machines have uh, really demanding workloads, even though, uh, you know, we actually have no idea what's going on. We'd like to know the, the block ranges or maybe some description of the VMDKs that define those virtual machines so that we could do something about it. Uh, you know, it, when, a, when a customer wants to create a snapshot, it'd be uh, really great that uh, instead of having the host go off and do something in order to, uh, to do the snapshot, the array, which is highly virtualized and also highly optimized for these types of storage operations, can do that work uh, for the end user and offload the, the ESX host. So, so you know, this is sort of the, the integration mandate, and we've been talking about this with VMware 
for a very long time, back in the early days of, of Equalogic, I think uh, middle of the last decade, uh, and uh, we've actually created this relationship with a lot of the key players inside VMware, just by chance, uh, and, and you know, just like us, you know, everyone's grown up, everyone's in, in big positions now, but we <laughs> sort of have the ins, and you know, we've been invited back. Uh, many, many times uh, when uh, when VAI was being rolled out, we were one of the, the first partners to, and, and we actually were one of the design partners. We were in there helping to design the way this thing should work. Uh, VASA, which was just uh, uh, released uh, this week, it's a very important technology and it's going to grow into something very big uh, over the next few years. That That is something that we co-developed with them. Are you, how does that work? Are you like in, the, in there side by side with EMC and NetApp co-developing this stuff or do they sort of silo it out? Well, we silo, you know, it's, it's siloed out. So uh, they, they come to each company individually. Uh, it's, it's not like a big round table where you're sitting across from the guys from EMC and NetApp and, and you know, you're pointing fingers at it's each other. It's not a SNEA committee meeting. No, no, it's yeah. not at all. And actually, that's that actually a fundamental difference uh, between the way integration is done at this level versus how it's done in standards committees. Uh, and uh, one Some, of the somebody has the final say and can just go. Exactly, exactly. It's it's uh, you know some someone is basically going to tell all the children to, to to stop you know messing around and get things done. And, and you'll notice things get done more quickly yeah. in those environments. Um, so let me uh, answer your, your second question. Compellent, as I mentioned before, has only been around for six months, but uh, we are already in the process of getting them more and more involved and ramped up in, in this, this this kind of development. And uh, just last week, we had a big meeting uh, in Palo Alto with uh, all of our counterparts in engineering at VMware, and it was actually the first time that Compellent was participating there. And uh, you know, frankly, for me, it was actually a lot of fun. Back in the old days with Equalogic, uh, when we were just a small company, our QTRs were kind of a ruckus. We'd be sitting there having really lively discussions about various things. And it was actually a lot of fun to have uh, you know, my compellent colleagues in the room because we actually created another ruckus. And, yeah. and so I don't know if you know this, John. Uh, uh, Equalogic was a New Hampshire-based startup. Very cool company. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, this has been coming up on theCUBE this week is the idea that co-engineering has been a negative for some of the other latecomers with VMware. VMware. So um, the co-engineering that you guys are doing, that's a great, great advantage for you guys. So, so the question is, how does it translate to product value? So let's talk about you know, how it renders itself. So my final question is to, to customers saying, you know, is it transparent? Do you, like, it's all invisible to you, but are you seeing the benefits there? Uh, absolutely. I, I think uh, you know, as as I said earlier, with some of these uh, acquisitions that Dell has made, they they do an exceptional job, especially on the equal. Well, let, let me ask, let me ask it differently. Because you guys do bake-offs when you, when yep, you, you know, so just so you look at everybody, you look at other people, and Dell's you know supplier yours. Talk about the difference when you do the bake-offs and what Dell's come out with. Well. I'll give you the example of why we chose Equalogix in the first place. We did a bake-off between a lot of the major vendors, you know, some of the ones mentioned here already. And we started looking at these products and, and really the choice was easy for us. And it was simple, it really came down to two major factors, but there were many others. The first one was, was ease of management. I mean, the interfaces for the Equalogix platform, it's just simply to manage. You can dish up a volume in two to three minutes versus provisioning lawns, keeping an Excel spreadsheet, you know, tracking all your disks, and it takes you 45 minutes to, to serve up a volume to a server. The, the second was really cost, and that is where, again, Equalogix does a really good job of this. You know, we looked at these other products and we said, okay, we want to replicate that storage array from one site to another. A lot of the other vendors said, whoa, time out. You know, this is an extra license. It's going to cost you a little bit more to do that. Well, we want to replace our backup systems and we just want to do snapshotting. Whoa, time out. That's another license. That's going to cost you a little bit. And Equalogix, it's one-stop shopping. You have two line items. You have the cost for the array, and then you've got support and maintenance. And everything, when they come out with something and release it, it's all baked into that support and maintenance, which is, you know, from a customer standpoint, it's nice. Okay, we're, we're here inside theCUBE. Dell's got a lot of action going on. Changing, growing, new technology, deep with VMware. Uh, Dave, uh, good, good story there, let's wrap this up. Yeah, Laz and, and Rich, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate you guys making the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for your for time. Us.